So anyway, laziness is a virtue. The, the main thing is if you if, if you've dealt with exporter, you've probably torn I torn what little is left of my hair out. It's just it's too complicated, it's too messy. And because a lot of times you have to put multiple things in multiple places, you've got to know what's okay and what's not okay, what's default, what's not allowed. You're exporting variables, which means you have to deal with sigils, and you, you, you change the type of the variable. You decide that verbose is going to be a hash now. Now you have to re-export it with a different sigil. It's okay. uh, One of the things is that if I'm breaking a large module up into small chunks to make, it, to make the size of it usable, and to avoid namespace collisions. I want that to be easy. I don't want to again, have it be painful. And a lot of times it is, and it shouldn't be. So exporter proxy does a couple of things. The simple part of it is that instead of exporting variables, I export the entire symbol. So if you export verbose with this thing, you're pushing the entire glob up into, your, into the caller. There's no exporting of variables. You export names. So, for example, if I use exporter proxy with verbose and provnicate, whatever verbose and provnicate are, pink, they're in the caller, or they're available to the caller. They can say no export, and they can they can pick one or the other of them. But the point is, I don't have to deal with dollar signs. If verbose is a hash, if we later change it to an array, if verbose is a scalar, and I later change it to a subroutine, no harm, no foul. Whatever verbose is, they've got it. If it's more than one thing, it's all of them. They get all of them. They get the symbol. Now, along with this, when I use exporter proxy, so that I know what I've exported, it installs an array called exports, and it installs a method called exports. I use those mainly for testing, because I can ask, now that I've exported this stuff, can I do it? Is it, is it even there? Um, there we go. The other thing that this allows you to do, and, and where it's handy for breaking up classes, is I can add an argument saying dispatch equals a name. And that name is installed as a method, a subroutine, in my class. And I'll show you what it does in a minute, but all it really does is ask, can I do that? And it goes there. What that allows me to do is write classes that aggregate other ones and redispatch into them. So let's say I write a query module. This, I wrote this because I had this particular problem that I don't like to have SQL scattered all over my code. I want to put it in one place. If I have any hardwired SQL, I want to put it in a subroutine that handles that SQL. I don't like it when stuff comes in. I'd rather have all of the squeal in one place where I can find it. And when something screws up, I can see where it came from. So you start getting into, well, I have stuff that does modifies, things that do lookups, read-only, write-only, whatever. But then I've got user IDs. So I, I want to have a user ID function, but then I end up with lookup underscore user ID and modify user ID. The names for these get really, really long. You know, this company user ID, that company user ID, lookup this company user ID. The, the method names, just to avoid collisions, become too big to manage. That is not lazy. If I split the module up, I've got a new problem, because I've still got user IDs in each of these things. Now people have to know how to call them. Well, they can call lookup colon colon user ID, or just as messy. And now I can't even split the code up further if I want to later, because people have hardwired the methods. So I could, one bad fix to this is writing a single user ID method that every time anyone ever calls it, it always checks all its arguments to see, did you call me as a lookup, or did you call me as a modify? Part of the problem with that, you know, OP, PDP, everyone's seen the reasons that's evil. There's another thing I don't like about it is you're running a sanity check to validate something that the caller knew in advance what they were doing. Why should I check what you're doing if you knew what you wanted? If you wanted a lookup, you knew it was a lookup. Why should I, I double check your logic? Another bad solution, obviously, is something like this. <laughs> you know, that's just ugly enough. I don't need to describe it. So my fix was to proxy the calls. What I do here is I've got a top half that just aggregates the available methods. And the bottom halves implement the handlers for them. 
So the top half redispatches into a module. It says if you want to do a lookup, you must want to go here. Here's your lookup. If the bottom half is called, it knows it's in the right place. It doesn't double check, does this guy want to look up or modify? It's, it's there because it needs to be. So in the bottom half, I build a method and I use exporter proxy to push my methods up to the caller, up to the person using me. If I have local utilities, I don't export them. That's how I keep them private. So the things like user ID are something I would export to the person who uses me. I don't know why they want a user ID. I just know that if they ask me for a user ID and I'm in the lookup side of life, I've got a query that looks up a user ID. If I'm on the modify module and someone calls user ID, I'm going to modify a user ID. It's up to them to call the correct thing. But the top half also gets pretty simple. In this case, if I have a module that does look that aggregates all of my lookups, it's going to look something like this. I've got user info, meaning of life, whatever I want to look up. I pull in the public, the exported portions of each of those modules. And then I say, my dispatcher is called lookup. Now, anyone that uses this module gets a single method called lookup. Well, now if I have one top-level module that handles all my different types of queries, lookups, modifies, handles, frobnicators, this just does use of each of these. That's all it really... That might have its own constructor, the destructor, any sanity check code for both settings. But now here's what it looks like to the callers. If I have a query object, each, there's a dispatcher called lookup that came back from the lookup side of life. So if I call lookup and I call user ID, I give it the arguments. If I want to modify, I call modify user ID, whatever. That's reasonably clean. People can see what it means. Now, the methods inside of the are short. They're user ID. You know what they mean. Publicly, the stuff is only accessible through the proxy. So now what happens is the dispatcher, you look back at that lookup module, it just said use, 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 dispatcher equals. It doesn't know what it's ex exporting. It doesn't have to. It just says, hi, can I do this? Yes, go do it. The advantage there is if I add a new export to one of the, the low-level handlers, it's immediately accessible. I have no more bookkeeping. I don't have to say, well, I'm re-exporting this, I'm re-dispatching that, I'm, I'm calling it. it just, if I add it, I can test it. Anything that I add to the low-level handlers that I don't go out of my way to export simply isn't available through the proxy. It's private. Done. I can test it. I can validate it. When I think it works, I export it. Go and export a proxy, add it to the list. Now, anyone that, that rolls this handler module up is going to have access to that module. No extra bookkeeping required. The other thing, too, that this does, I don't know if people have seen this before. Everyone here used the symbol module? Okay, so I'm not going to... Oh, the symbol saves you from turning off strict in order to export symbols. So this shows you how to install, say, a subroutine. You do a qualify to ref, and that gives you a reference in star dollar ref equal to a subroutine, so you can get a local anonymous glob that you can install things with. So the dispatcher, if, if you have a dispatcher name, when you this is the code from exporter proxy, this is all it has to do to say, okay, I want my caller to have a thing called this name. But what does it do? It splices the first option, it splices the operation off the first argument. That's where that lookup user ID, whatever came from. The user ID gets pulled off the stack. If I can do that, fine. If not, we've got a problem. You asked me to do something that I don't know how to do. Otherwise, go to the handler, the stack that's been set for it. That's all you have to do. Nobody can get to something that isn't exported. 
And now the names are segregated under lookup and modify whatever the dispatcher names are. And that's the talk. The, the thing is, it's, it's that one thing that does the installation, that's about 80% of the code in the module. But by separating the exporting and the aggregation and redispatch, the upper level modules, they, they get a, basically a top half. And the top half knows what it can do. The bottom half knows how to do it. And separating those out makes your life a lot easier. And this does it, if you compare this to exporter, what you'd have to do with that, you'd have to export each of the symbols, you'd have OKs and whatever, you'd have to use base exporter. But the amount of bookkeeping you have to do in your code to know that you're exporting, to know what you're exporting, to know who's importing it, is a lot more than just using a module with some names. And adding that dispatch to it allows you to proxy into the modules, which makes it very fast to, to split modules up into usable chunks. Where is this documented? Uh, if you do a Perl doc exporter proxy, um, I, I tend to be something of a documentation fanatic. So the, well, no, it's not on here, it's not on my computer. The, the, there's actually more documentation than code in the module. It actually shot it in the last version I had on it's on CPAN yet. It actually shows how to split a module into pieces. Is there a tutorial about it? No, you'd have to actually just read the docs. The, the basic point is that is you go into what you've got that's got a polluted namespace, break it into chunks that make sense. Short the names so they make sense in that context, and then push them up to something that aggregates it and puts a, a sane name on things. And that's about it. So if I have queries that do lookups and modifies, the lookup class just does use, 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 use. It pulls in all the methods that are exported that handle different types of SQL. And it does a use exporter proxy with a dispatch equals lookup, read only, whatever, you, whatever name makes sense to you. Well, now you call something to lookup the name of a method and its arguments. And it, it looks a little cleaner then because you can see what you're doing. And you don't have to have method names that are something underscore something all through everywhere. The methods in the lookup are user ID. The lookup in modify is user ID. The lookup knows that it's only being used to look up. The modify knows that it's only being used to modify. You don't have all those sanity checks in each of them. Because if you're here, I know that you're looking up. If you're there, I know that you're modifying. End of story. You can't, you can't be in modify land if you're looking up, because you would have called modify, which is a different module over here. But again, you don't have it. It's easier to uh, split up existing modules that way, because now you can just use exporter proxy to push the pieces you want out. It also saves you too in large modules if you've got utility subs. You don't have to worry about all the underscores and the was I called in the right context and all the rest of it, because the utility subs aren't visible to the aggregating class, so the dispatcher class. It doesn't see the things that aren't exported. Because all it does is use, 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 use. It doesn't know what it's dispatching. That's why you don't have to bookkeep it at two levels. So I don't have to say, you know, uh, use look, the, 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 ag, the dispatching class doesn't say use, look up, user ID, this, 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 this. It just takes whatever user ID gives it and, and pushes that out to the real world. That was it.